Hello, welcome back. Um, this is F3 Firebase Firestore and Flutter. My name is Chidebere. This is a continuation of our training series of how to integrate Fire and use Firestore uh, in our Flutter projects or Flutter application. So, in our previous video tutorial, we looked at how to set up our Firebase uh, project and how to integrate it into our Flutter app by adding these uh, Google services uh, .json file as well as adding um, these uh, classes and uh, as well as changing our minimum SDK to 23 here and also we added imported this plugin here so in our popspec.yml from uh, pop.dev, we imported the Firebase core and as well as Cloud Firestore. And I've gone ahead to disable not check because it gives me a lot of issues whenever I am doing training. So uh, with this done, we are ready to start uh, coding. So let's quickly close all this. Let's close all this. And then over here, the first thing we are going to do today is to initialize our Firebase uh, uh, app by doing uh, first of all widgets flutter binding dot what ensure initialization this ensures that our uh, anything we have in this method initializes before our application starts if not if your application starts before Flutter uh, Firebase is initialized, it will screw up a lot of errors. So here, we would like to make this an asynchronous method because uh, we, are wait, we are going to wait for Flutter to initialize. And then we use the await Firebase. OK, so we've not imported Firebase into our projects. So we'll go ahead. Uh, first of all, let's see what the problem. Let me do pop get again. And uh, after this pop get, the next thing we are going to do is to try and see if we can import. Uh, okay, this is it. Firebase call. So let me quickly remove this not check. Firebase dot what dot initialize. And what else we want to do uh, dot when completed, when initialization has been completed, what do we want to do? We want to print a message that will tell us that Firebase has been initialized. Firebase has been initialized. So, with this, we will know that, yes, our Firebase initialized successfully, and then we can fire run. So I'm going to stop this application, which is running, and start it up again. So uh, just like before, oh, I have I have an error here. Sorry, let me quickly stop that. Uh, this is a null check, and uh, I disable null check here by changing this to 2.11.0 so we fire on our application again so that the reason why we need to do it this way is because we added some packages and some dependency and running doing hot restart or hot reload is not going to help us it's not going to work why this is loading let's quickly go over to our project firebase project go over to firestore database and then we will set it so one of the tutorials we will be looking at will involve Firebase rules and how to set up Firebase rules. So uh, the first thing we do here is to create database. Now start in production mode and we have start in test mode. Start in production mode ensures disables read and write. You can't save data to the database. You can't read from it. It will require you to do what? To come over to the rules and set your own rules on how you want to use it. But if it's test mode, it will allow you to read and write for the next 30 days. That's if the timestamp, if it checks and your current timestamp is less than the 20th of March, then 
it will allow you to read and write but after that 30 days you will need to update your uh your rule your firebase rule so we go ahead and start in test mode since this is a tutorial and then it will ask you to enable location you enable so it's going to do a few things and then so and we are going to set it up in a, in a short while so this is still building and while it's still building let's uh let's continue with some other things so let's talk about um, firebase uh rules okay it's setting up the rules now let's talk about firebase rules a little uh, while it's still setting up firebase rule actually help protect your data as in it protects um your data or your database from unauthorized access so this is what it looks like we have the data this is where your data are being stored where you can uh, look at them and see them and this we have rule here this is where you configure your rule and we have indexes indexes is used for search to perform high level search so this is the current rule i have here it allows read and write if the request time is still less than 20, uh, 20th of march 2022 so we'll, we'll have 30 days to use this and then we have indexes here as well oh it didn't load so uh, let me try and reload that so this is index i can create index to use it to perform a compound query but we are going to touch that in advance uh, in our advanced training or tutorial and then this shows you the uh, usage the number of queries the number of uh, read and write that is being performed in a day and the delete that you have so with this setup now we are ready to move on with our project so um while this is still building let's go ahead and start um uh, coding while we wait for it to start up here so i'll come over to this place and uh, the first thing which we have is how to add data to fire store okay it has started how to add data to fire store so uh with that the first thing we need to do <clears throat> is to declare an instance of fire store how do we do that? We say fire instance, fire, fi okay, let's say final fire, okay, let's, let's use the whole thing, fire store instance, and uh, we call firebase fire store instance. So we've initialized, we've created an instance of fire firebase fire store here and we can now easily use it and while we call this it automatically imported this cloud fire store for us here so what do we want to create we want to create a, a void method here you say and call it a add data so this is what we will add uh this is what we add to our button for us to be able to add data to firestore so we do firestore we call this instance which we are calling here we do firestore dot collection then what collection are we looking at here users now the beautiful thing about firestore is that if it looks for these users and it can't find it it will automatically create it for us and for us to add data we add, need to add it in form of a map so that's why we are putting a query bracelet here and we close up this so with this now we want to add few data what do we add okay let's add something like name name we call it uh let me put my name and put comma and then age um um, definitely I'm not going to add my age for you to see so I'm going to put 100 years okay let's do 50 uh, okay so email sorry email so here 
um, what do we add? Email, email sample at gmail.com. So the next thing which we want to add is uh, we add want to add address and inside our address we are going to have the street and the city so um what's the most popular city in nigeria um that should be lagos so let me use lagos so let's say street 256 and then uh this is a nested uh, data. Here I will show you the way it will appear. And then city, I put Lagos. So with this now, I will now say, this is for us to add a new data. If this, okay, let's, let's finish up our code first. So come down to this place and then, then we add, then if, this completes if this uh, code if everything goes right then we want to do what we want to print we want to print uh, uh let's just print the value dot id here so the value the id the the unique id it created is what is going to print out and then let's also add uh, data added successfully. So with this now, we can be able to to call this add data here. And uh, let me copy. Okay, we can be able to. Okay, another wonderful thing you see, Firebase has been initialized. You remember what we did up here when we call the initialize and we tell it that once it completes, just print this. So it printed this for us here. So going uh, up here, we want to add this, our add, uh, add data. We want to add this data to our Firebase. And this is our Firebase. There's nothing in it right now. There's nothing in it right now. Uh, let me see if I can reload. It says it fails to load collection, but there's no collection in it right now. So it's not going to load anything. Just to be able to show you, I don't have anything right now. It's empty. It's empty. And uh, I go back to my project and I will add what? I'll add, add data. Okay, just this. So with this now, I can call this and everything will work out fine. So I refresh. This should turn blue to tell us that we have a function we can call now. So let's look at this together here. I click on, uh, I have my, this uh, emulator is making use of my internet. Make sure you have an internet connection. And then I click on execute. So you can see, it's here. It's trying to query the database and it's assessing it here. And boom, this is it here. Data added successfully. And this is the unique ID it's created for our data. So let's refresh this guy and see what it gives us. Mm, this is it here, the user collection which we created here. We created the user collection, the user collection, and we didn't specify the document we want to add it to. So it automatically generated a document for us and then document ID and then added this to it. So let's quickly see what was created or what is created. We have the name, the email, age, and the address just like we added it so this is the end of this uh tutorial in our next tutorial we'll be looking at uh what exactly we will be looking at how to update data in firestore thank you